Greetings, mortals. I am Natus, the ruler of hell. And today we will be reacting to the newest chapter of Black Clover, chapter 304 Reality and Magic. And oh boy, if this chapter is not one of the most controversial chapters ever or despised. You know, this is one of those chapters that's really gonna matter where Tobata is going with this and how this story is gonna be concluding because I can easily, because if you've been on Twitter and watching the people's thoughts on this chapter or anything, you can see that it's extremely negative. Now, let's stop being around the bush and, bush and let's go into this chapter. So we start this chapter off with the remaining soldier, demon soldiers or whatever they are that Magica was using falling, uh, going back to their human bodies, which is surprising since I thought Magicla's soldiers were supposed to be like just figuratively there, like their souls, not their actual bodies, this there, but apparently they were and we see them falling to the ground as we, um, see a bunch of them. Like, we don't see much of a good focus, just a bunch of random corpses, basically. As, which is honestly surprised they're still even are, because this entire battle, they've been getting slaughtered pretty easily. I mean, you're pulled, filled with holes and slaughtered, so I'm kind of surprised that they are still around. I mean, I guess it was a hundred, so I guess a couple of them staying would make sense. So, yeah. Now we get to see, uh, Lopa Chica, we see her curse mark come fully disappearing. With some people, which some people actually are saying that, is Magic actually that because the curse mark completely disappeared? Eh, I feel like there might be a difference on curses in that department, if I'm being totally honest. Like, I could see it be something like, it depends on how long or is it, how extreme was it? Because curses like Henry and Charlotte's, those are more like long-term curses. Like those didn't like, like those would lead to death, but you could survive with them. Like Henry can live; it's just he'll be a nuisance to the world. Charlotte would have survived, could have survived them, but she would always have it. So yeah. So we see the curses appearing. Which, by the way, we have a bit of nudity from Lope Chica. So yeah, my theory about every. Vanika, Noel, and Lo Pachika being completely naked right now was true. Where did... You know... I get how, how Vanika's clothes got destroyed, and I get how Noel's clothes got destroyed, but I don't get how uh, Lo Pachika's clothes got destroyed. Like, those black things just look go too well on top of your body. And I know it wasn't shown her clothes afterwards, but how did they get destroyed, really? It's like a weird thing. So we have asked to be like, Noel, you did it! As we see Lopachika gain conscious and us like, Ah, oh, Queen Lopachika, you're awake, your majesty! So but like, he's so formal with her. And we see Lopachika waking, have her look at herself, see that she's naked, as he look, also realize it. Ooh, oops. <laughs> as he, no, no, Lopachika going, uh, being flustered and, you know, be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm naked, I'm sorry. Ooh, as we see us looking up at him, getting basically the nosebeads, be like, be like nope. Uh, and I was like, haha, have no fe fear, I didn't see a thing. S which might actually be true. I think he it looks like he's actually staring at her hat and then he looks at her expression and he just now realized that she's actually naked. So you might actually not see it. And then we see Noah punching him in the air and she's like, nothing I did, did nothing. <laughs> Which is true technically. And Noah's like, what are you doing, dark star? So I guess, in case if anyone was expecting Noah not to be a tsundere, nope, she's still gonna be a tsundere. And then we see a low Noel in this like water dress. Surprising it covers anything, honestly. Hugging uh, Lope Chica as she's also naked. 
And they're basically like happy. And then we see Odin be like in a chibi form, like Odin used up all her power, which is the expansion. And we see also Odin be like, Lope Chica! And they say, Noel, Lope Chica, I'm so glad you're alive. And Lope Chica's reaction is like, Noel, Odin. And so I'll stop being like, what was that for Noel? And so I'll be like, shut up, Doxta, you're the one who. We also see no Lope Chica uh, uh, covering her up, but she's got, don't worry, she's gonna get water just soon. Which again, I'm not sure how that covers. Although, now I look at it, it might actually be a Mercury, dra Mercury dress. It looks more fitting with Nozelle, so maybe it's actually a Mercury thing? Not to mention that she's not covering, using it right now, but yeah. So we have Noelle turning away, and I was like, huh? And yeah, we have, no we have Noelle's inner thought. What do I do? I haven't seen him in ages, and I'm thrilled, but... I'm too embarrassed to look at him in the face. So yeah, and I was like, "What's up, Noel?" And he's like, uh, "No, and then she no." But just asked again, be like, "Hey, Noel," and she does nothing. And then Noel's like, "It's nothing, Dark Star." And then we see Noel look at her brother, and no, and it turns out no, Zell is also a tsundere, which makes me curious on his interaction with Dolphin even more. And it's just like, the curse is broken, yet, now that I'm able to, I don't know how to talk to Noelle. <laughs> talk about problems. And at least no Noelle was able to come, come finish her sentence, unlike when Aza, when she punched him. And then we see uh, Real and Charlotte. Uh, Real time, Charlotte, I'm sorry, Charlotte. The spells effect is going to end soon. And you see... No, it'll be like, I still haven't managed to create my greatest work. I guess my ultimate masterpiece is, and we don't get it. Like, I guess it's gonna be revealed at some point, but maybe not. Like, I'm not exactly sure. It's on those lines that I feel like we're gonna need a flashback to truly get, or at least at the same uh, words being used later. But yeah. So I shall be like, you don't need to apologize, Will. You made it possible for me to fight. I'm grateful to you. Besides, we can't afford to die yet. Am I wrong? So yeah, pretty confident. We'll get into it when we when the moment comes. And then we see new little Pachika. Again, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Mercury. Be like Gaja. As we see running to them where while well, we see Locke and uh, Gaja coming from it. Now, this is something I have to take note of. If I recall correctly, I might need to go check back to check, but the last time we see seen Vonica, because she doesn't be in this chapter, it's offhand like semi mentioned by not later. We see Vonic like we see this gateway, this hole with like a bunch of the shocks and like the one that Gaja used to finish up where he wanted to give his life to finish off Magicla. But we do not see Vonica anywhere, and I'm pretty sure the last time we seen her was like right outside of that blast. So where is she in this panel? Like, she is not mentioned at all. Like, maybe there was some panel cutting or something where we, there was supposed to be a panel of like Gaja staring over Vonica and then like blasting her. But it doesn't seem like there was any extra damage to, that would signify that. And we know that she didn't die in that assault because then Magicka would become stronger and there's no pl plot twist this chapter that Magicka comes back. So where is she? Maybe it's gonna be explained in the volume, but that's about it. It's kind of weird. So we see uh, Gaja in his burned body and bloody coming as he gets like a faint smile he's like queen lord pachika i'm so glad you're say and he and the fags with a spell cut off as he's falling to the ground as we see lord pachika in shock as we also see rel and charlotte come falling down and for lack of a better term they are that well basically they're supposed to be that like i believe we're gonna say it as long as this power is active up they are alive, and Magicka even said, we are basically as good as that. Or Magicka's like, should be that at this point? So yeah. 
Now we see Noel like seeing it and be like, Gaja! Or Lord Pachuca is probably screaming. Or someone screaming, Gaja, Captain Charlotte, and Captain Real. I can imagine anyone screaming. So yeah, now we actually get like a good, like a, a from uh, the air panel of what's happening. And if I try as I may, but I cannot tell see Veronica even from this panel. Like, I see a bunch of soldiers who wear like, seem to be wearing black pants, that's, and since Vika should be naked at this point, b but we see a bunch of them, but we don't see like anything that would like fit Vonica's appearance, or like in the area. Like there's maybe one in the, like a big pole in the ground, but that doesn't look to fit her shape. And also I'm pretty sure she was more in the middle. So her bunny is for the most part gone, if this chapter is to be believed. Maybe on Arthur's error, it's probably gonna be revealed soon. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of days we actually gonna get a reveal, but there's no comment. Although I need to go back to see how quickly people these problems are actually noticed. But yeah, now we see Noe now we see uh Lo Pajika make it using a uh, spell she had. What do we call her magic? Aquinia lore. And we see her desperately trying to heal them, but it's of no use. We see her filled with tears. Like, my magic can't heal wounds like that. No, they saved me, but I, I. I mean, which is very emotional. Like, it, this is like, ignoring the end, this is like a very good. Like, this is, like, done really well, in all honesty. And it was also like, Demon Destroyer can't do a thing about injuries, which is true. And we see one being like, damn it, isn't there anything we can do? I'm guessing it's Asta. And then, you know, I was like, this can't be happening. They did the right thing. They worked so hard. We can't just let them die like this. Which is... I guess for Gaja, true, and Charlotte, but really, I think I can. And then we have Nog be like, there is nothing to be done. We defeated a su and we see Nog be like, we defeated a Supreme Devil. We should be content with that. It says, like, Vice Captain Nog. As we see Nog, the narration. But not everyone who's right is necessarily rewarded for it. It's, that's reality. Although I did what want to them to be rewarded. So I guess this is going back into Nark's viewpoint where he's like, be not anyone who does right will be always rewarded, but I would like them to be rewarded. So yeah, now Nark's like, hey! And Nark's like, oh yes, I bought the one you said but to bring, but it's too, as we see, uh, no, I'll be like, no! As we see um, Mimosa in her new magic, Mimosa can do it! Now, this is another thing that people mention that it seems like uh, Mimosa has a four leaf clover grimoire in this one. Oh, by the way, she's probably also naked, just covered by roses. Because apparently, water and ro flowers destroy clothes in this universe. Oh, yeah, by the way, people mentioned how it looks like Mimosa is having a four leaf clover grimoire in this scene, which is possible, but. I don't know, I think it's just one of those manga color things where it's kind of hard to tell. And we see Mimosa be like, I am not letting anyone die. And we, we see uh, her using ultimate plant magic, Flower Princess Utopia. And we see them being healed, and I'll be like, this recovery spell, it's... As we see Gaja being healed, and we see them be like, well, just overrule reality after all. Some people are saying this is. Some people are saying this is um, Tobata like trolling the fans with this statement. Like, literally everything with magic can be overruled, and that's like a bit of a problem. Which again, we get in this into the end of the chapter because I feel like the end of the chapter also kind of fits into this discussion. But yeah, basically everything that they do now can be overruled with magic, and then we see. That's what magic does, right? Which could also say, I would also like to mention that some people like to use the whole it's magic so we don't have to explain it. Where this seems like they're actively making a joke at this. And you see uh, 
Lil Pachico be happy and be and sh and uh, also be like, real Captain Charlotte. Thank goodness, Mimosa. That was so cool. As we see a happy Mimosa, and then we see Lil Pachico bowing again. All that for somebody like me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then we ha I've got to be like, be like, please stop. It was no more than my duty as a spirit guardian. And we see, you know, I'll be like, don't you people have anything else to say? Uh, yeah. And now the shippers are gonna go crazy. And we're going to have Gotcha be like, I guess thinking, all right, I guess I'm sad. It's like, I love you. And we see everyone shocked. Um, which I guess means that... No, if, which I guess is the reaction of fans will be like, Oh my god, someone in love with a character is actually gonna say, Oh, I love you? In Black Clover? What? And it's not some crazy psychopath? Look at you, Sunley and Vanika. Wherever Vanika is. And yeah, these faces are like, funny. <laughs> and then we've got to be like, Not as my queen, but as a woman. What I feel for you is... As we see, Noah like, acts super flossy, like, poof. And we see Noah be like, what? Wait, what? Wait, Gaja. And we see Noah be like, ah. And so Gaja be like, did I say something wrong? Uh, no, you just the only one who didn't say what everyone was thinking. Well, Dolph, I guess, is not there, so I guess he knows I wasn't thinking of love. Well, I also have a relationship. Inside of our brother sister love, but that's beside the point. As we see Chibi or Dimi like, Lolo Pachika is mine, but it's you, Gaja, then. Well, I guess the mother is on board with you. And then we see Nozel um, looking around, be like, oh, uh, this, and he's like, it's irritating, but I suppose it's thanks to him that Noel grew strong. We have to save Yami, no matter what. Which also is actually starting making a meme. People saying like, does everyone forget about vengeance? Which, to me, I feel like it's more like people are more connected to Yami because of the characters. Like, they have no re like Nozawa has no reason to say, I guess I should thank you, uh, ya no vengeance, that we must save vengeance because he was focused on Noel. And he has no real strong opinion on Mimosa. Like, I think he doesn't even know her name, in all honesty. And then we have Nock in his inner thoughts being like, It appears they've grown far stronger than I dreamed they would. Now there's just one Dark Tribe member left. The last one is. That's what I was talking about. That's like the closest thing we are going to get to acknowledging Vonica in this chapter. So, do, so we can't even use the fact that God, maybe, uh, be to what I completely forgot about uh, the Dark Tribe Vonica. Like, he openly, openly knows. So now we have some time jump, like we already had this arc with, with the Nacht's attack and the uh, Art Squad. Like, shortly before Magicula's defeat, as we see the throne room where Yuno and Nozel Languis were fighting, and then we see like this pretty badass shot of Nozel, no, well, Xenon being like, We are only wasting time, I'll end this. And see, Languis being like, Curses, what do we do now? And see, you're like, Languis. Buy me three minutes. I'll finish him with my next attack. So, let's see. Where do we begin with this chapter after this? Alright, let's get through with this part. What could no Langre this battle? This battle, I feel like will probably last only three to two chap two to three chapters, honestly. Like, how will Langris be able to defend against this? Since, you know, Langris was apparently not even anything able to do against Xenon before the 100% power up. Maybe someone will show up, either Patri or the Black Bulls who failed to save Yami. I feel like one of them are the most likely. I could even see both. We'll see in the next two to three chapters. And what this attack could be, probably like some ultimate spell that takes them completely out of this form, I would say, since this form doesn't have a time limit from what we know. And I feel like this will lead into like, let's say, a battle where, like, I mean, what ha is happening with the hills now is gonna go back to, oh, it's already finished. Like, I could say, like, all we have to do now is 
they defeat Xenon, and that's it. So, and then we're like, oh, it's already over. So, now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Now a night. Now, I'm not sure if I explained this in the last chapter, but I honestly have no problem with Gaja, Rail, and Charlotte surviving. Like, if they survive, I have no issue. In fact, to me, everyone in this group team kind of felt like a weird character to die. Lopa Chica, we barely, we just barely got to know her, and she was a damsel for most of the time that we had her in the story. So having her die would be weird. Gaja, he has barely been focused on. Like, even though he's more focused on the rest of the Spirit Guardians, even that is barely anything. Like, we cut to him a couple of times. So it makes no sense for him to die right now. Real, that around the same age as the cow as Asta, so that immunity, and Charlotte. Confessing her feelings to Yami, type of thing, you know. So, yeah. Now, what I actually think the people's problem it would be, if it wouldn't be so much of a problem if they survived, it's just that, you know, it's the way how it was done. Like, this chapter really made it look like they were going to die, die. And now they not only survived, but they also pretty much, uh, you know, I said, oh, we can bend reality to our will, basically. Which is very annoying because you know this isn't going to happen with the villains. Like, the heroes can bend reality to their will as much as they want, but the villains are never gonna do that. Which is ironic considering the fact every time th this arc, it seems to be, they want is to say, oh, the villains have insane mana to the heroes. But it's not gonna matter. Like, Vyla can have 10 times stronger mana than anyone in this room and she'll not bend reality. Although, again, where the fuck is she? As well as Magicula, Lucifero, um, every villain. So it's gonna be weird. It, it's pretty questionable. And again, another problem that is there is that fact that it seems like everyone in the room right now is 100% fine. Like, that's what I th think is the true problem in the room here. Like, in this massive fucking battle, that if three characters would have died if Momosa hadn't shown in the right time. And everyone is fine. Asta is fine. Lope Chica is fine. Like, all these characters can still battle. Like, the closest the characters are to damage are the ones who aren't even got, are already that. So, yeah, that's what I think is the true problem in this chapter. And I have no... And I am not surprised at all the people at the pissed at this chapter. No, no, this is again. This could lead into like a oh, that's not a good sign. I mean, I'm a my main manga is My Academia, and trust me, the work, although it wasn't as one-sided for the heroes as this arc has been, but Ben lead it to something that was very Bad for the heroes. I mean, just look at what's happening with the uh, hero society right now, for God's sakes. So I could easily see this being end up like, or I could always see like the only fears, by the way, about this, like being, oh, everything looks, looks fine, looks great. Well, guess what? Now, because all three are trying like that, we're gonna have all the Clifford devils, all the devils showing up all at once. Me and now you're gonna have to fight all that on your own in literal seconds. Now, that theory is, I think, a bit exaggerated. I mean, I know some people say, I know that theory exists, and I could be where Tobata is leading with this, but my, my problem with the theory is the fact that it feels, I feel like it has to be a little more of a standard than just the Dark Triad being defeated. Defeated because, you know, aside from the fact that Magicla's curse, Required three specific devils. That theory has like seems to just be like in general, three corpses need to be characters have to be defeated. Which, to be fair, because the unknowability of Vonica, also the fact that Vonica literally just had that, and having her go from one army to the next would even be worse in my idea of having the Dark Tribe rise up as the demons and devils that they were building up to. But yeah. 
no, we'll see where this is going. Like, I feel like... I feel like this is gonna lead to something bad for the characters, but for now, this is ta a terrible chapter. Like, if it leads to something horrible for the heroes, this chapter will be like, you people have been going way overconfident. But if nothing changes, like let's say we just have a couple of Clifford that was showing up, and, you know, they don't actually start being the living, the living shit out of everyone, it's gonna be a bit bad, but we'll wait and see. So anyway, these are my thoughts on the chapter and what I think is gonna happen next. You tell me in the cards below what do you think? Do you think this is a little bit of too much or alright, too much plot immunity on the heroes or the better way to say it? Power tripping for heroes. What do, do you think about next? What do you think is gonna happen next? Do you think there's gonna like, there's gonna be a twist where something extremely bad's going to happen? Tell me in the comments below what do you think basically just. So anyways, I hope you like like this reaction. I hope you leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you people next time. Goodbye.